The scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moran at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I will give you this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills of east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Are you a dreamer? A couple of people are dreamers. You're a dreamer? Good. A young man called his mother and excitedly announced that he had just met the woman of his dreams. His mother said, why don't you send her flowers and invite her to your apartment for a home-cooked meal? The day after the big date, his mother called to see how things had gone. Mom, the evening was a complete disaster, he replied. She was not the woman of my dreams. Why, what happened? Didn't she come over? Yes, she came over, but she refused to cook. (laughs) Wow. I ask again, are you a dreamer? Good, we have one dreamer up front, young dreamer. Uh, Joseph. Some of you have seen Joseph in the amazing Tetracolor dream coat. Talks about Jesus, Joseph in his dreams. Our scripture characters today, Abram and Sarai, who later became Abraham and Sarah, were dreamers. Forget the fact that they were still able to father and mother children in their 90s. Anybody do that lately? Hmm. I was 42 when. My wife, Ivy, gave, she was much younger, gave birth to our first child. So we know a little bit of that. The first dream for Abram and Sarai came when Abram was 75 years old. At least the first we know of. They were willing to believe God and set out on a journey to an unknown land without the security of country and kindred, but only the promise that God gave them. How many of you at age 75 or even 35 would make that kind of journey, that kind of commitment? Reverend Justin Tell exclaims, at first, it seems like a rosy future, a great nation, a new land, blessings promised to whoever Abram blesses. What could Abram have to lose? He continues, several things come to mind, a sense of stability, worldly comfort, such as it was in those days. Family ties, gone now were Abram's retirement. No parties, no card games, no walks in suburbia with his wife. Just imagine God coming before us today, interrupting us during the announcements later on, and asking for volunteers to take this kind of journey. How many couples would go? You don't have to raise your hand. Would you be willing to go on a mission trip to folks devastated in Maui? Hmm. We'll hear later about Zimbabwe. Just imagine God coming to us today. What would you say? Would you be willing to take up that commitment, that that dream, those blessings? Hmm. They had a dream. 
Abram and Sarah. But I wonder if Abram and Sarah really caught the larger vision that I want you to try to capture today, all of us, the master plan, if you will. Did you grasp the purpose of the Hebrew nation? Well, the scriptures, the whole scriptures. First, you know, Genesis 12, 2 through 3 says this. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. So what does it say next? So that you will be a blessing. You're blessed, so you will be a blessing. That's God's plan. The dreams and visions behind the blessing of the Hebrews is to bless the world. It wasn't to be just their favorite sons and daughters, but to be blessed so they could bless others. And I believe we are to do the same. Amen? We are blessed people so that we may bless others. Wouldn't it be great vision of a dream to help folks feel the showers of God's blessings? Anybody know that hymn, There Should Be Showers of Blessings? Anybody? There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. Anybody got that? The chorus. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. Nobody else knew that to sing along with me? Good. The, the balcony section. I didn't warn Beverly about that. Sorry. So we're just doing it on my own here. And count your many blessings, which we'll sing a little later. God's blessings, not of a new home, a new hummer, but the blessings of God's grace and love and God's presence. God's special presence is a present, isn't it? God is with us. What a blessing. Dreamers. We are all dreamers like Abram and Sarai. So first of all, God, I believe, has created us to dream. God created Abram and Sarah to dream and envision. It wasn't enough for them to just stay in one place physically and spiritually. From the first humans, God said to them, I have given you this great creation as a gift. Are we dreamers? My dad dreamed to be a professional baseball player. Paul Farron was his name. He even caught two foul balls at Fenway Park over his life, both hit by Mickey Mantle. Yeah, my, that was my hero, Mickey Mantle. Now, you can't prove it because, you know, but, but one of them is actually signed by Ted Williams. It's a long story. I will tell you at Coffee and Fellowship. But my dad wanted to play pro ball. In fact, one day, many years ago, Whitey Ford... Some of you are old enough to remember Whitey Ford, left-handed pitcher for the Yankees, was in an off-season up in Maine where my dad and mom lived. And Whitey Ford said, I'll come and play any team. And my dad's team was willing to play him. And so my dad could have bat against Whitey Ford. All right? But you know why he didn't do it? It was a Sunday. <laughs> and my mom said, you can't play baseball on the Sabbath. And so he never did it. He wanted as his dream to be a pro ball player, but he only ended up being a pastor. <laughs> thankfully, thankfully. What are your dreams and visions for yourself in this church? God has called us all to dream. The book is, a Bible is full of dreamers, right? Adam and Eve and Noah and Sarah and Ruth and Joseph and Jeremiah and Martha and Peter and Paul and Mary. Catch that? Good. We are created to dream. Secondly, it is not enough simply to dream. We must do what the Bible people did. Step out in faith and make the dream a reality. We are called to dream, and the dream is that we are blessings. We probably would have not known the names of Abram and Sarai if they hadn't taken this journey. Are you willing to dream? To live out your dream? Many of us are great dreamers at night in our pajamas, right? Yeah. Many of us are good dreamers. You know, there's that new trend of wearing pajamas out in the malls and everything, right? Anybody ever do that? Don't, you don't have to raise your hand. But 
But how many of us are good dreamers while we are awake? How many of us step out in faith in God and dream while living? How many of us dream our dream as called by God to bless? As someone has put it, don't wait for your ship to come in, swim out to it. Or as Walter P. Christler said, the reason so many people never get anywhere in life is when opportunity knocks, they're out in the backyard looking for four-leaf clover. Hmm. Hmm. It's like playing the lottery when you've got one in millions of chances to, to win, right? Is that what God wants us to do, is to win the lottery? I guess we could bless others if we did. Hmm. God plants the seed of a dream in a human heart and then waits to see what we'll do with it. We have so many dreams. Live them out. Many people at Abram and Sarah's old age are simply willing to sit on the front porch and rock, you know. Others are willing to rock and roll, if you will. Hmm. Notice in verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. Some folks take this as an opportunity to curse because it says I will curse those who curse you. But who does the cursing? Do we? God. <laughs> yeah, leave that up to God. We bless. I remember years ago listening to a radio program of a psychologist, Dr. Sobel, in Boston. He asked the question that people would call in, and this is the question. You can answer it in your minds. If you could push a button and kill someone without anyone knowing it, would you? Guess how many percentage of people said that they would? 75% who called into this program. Hmm. Some people are upset and curse everything these days. You know, the Barbie movie. <laughs> too woke for some folk. Different colored M&Ms are too woke, or whatever that means. I'm glad that folks here at this church, because I've known you over the years, are people who bless others. Thanks to all of you who dream while awake and go out and bless. God works within you. Let us be challenged to do more in 2023 and beyond. I ask again, are you a dreamer? Thirdly and lastly, God has created us to dream to be a blessing and I know we can accomplish our dreams. Why? Because God is the greatest dreamer of all. God's the greatest dreamer. God populated this creation with exotic creatures and gorgeous mountains. I miss climbing up Mount Monadnock, not living in the area anymore. Anybody climb that this year? Amen, sister. Good. You obviously get down this year. Okay, good. Mount Monadnock. I miss that beauty. However, we've destroyed some of that beauty, haven't we? Sometimes we mess up the dream. We're human. So what did God do? Did God abandon the dream when we messed up? No. We're reminded that God sent a child, a savior, a dreamer to live with us, for us, to be a dream blessing, to share with us forgiveness and love and grace and hope that the dream is still alive. And we don't have to wait till next Christmas. Keep dreaming. God's with us. I don't know all your dreams. When's the next annual meeting? I never asked. Anybody know? June? Next June? Oh, you've had it. Okay. Hmm. At your annual meetings, I know that you probably hear how to balance the budget, right? <laughs> how to keep up the property. But I also hope and pray that you find other ways to serve your neighbors. I know you do. God's with you. We know that Dr. King was a dreamer. I have a dream. He proclaimed that all God's children will be able to hold hands together and not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. The dreamer was assassinated at age, anybody know? 39. But he almost didn't make it to 30. 
How many of you know the story? When an emotionally ill woman attacked him with a letter opener, doctors saved him but said that in that ambulance ride to the hospital, if he had just sneezed, he would have died. When he was in the hospital, Martin received many letters from presidents, kings, famous actors, politicians, but the one he liked the most was from a young girl. Here was her letter. Dear Dr. King, I am a ninth grade student at White Plains High School. While it shouldn't matter, I'd like to mention that I am a white girl. I read in the paper of your misfortune and of your suffering. And I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. I'm simply writing to say, I'm so glad you didn't sneeze. Mm. I'm so glad he didn't sneeze either. But I hope and pray that every day there's a dream that you all keep alive. My last thought, at your annual meeting next June, Maybe Pastor Cindy or some of the deacons can invite you all to come in your pajamas. You can have a big pajama party. I won't ask her to ask you to do that. As long as you take this challenge to dream while you're awake, to dream while living, to make your dreams a reality in your hearts and minds and spirit. If we do, then I believe, like Abraham and Sarah, God will show you the promised land, that you will be blessed, and more importantly, that you will be 